So these bushings appear to fit over this uh, thing, but I didn't measure them. And I began to think somebody, this is a box from Rockoto was open, but it fit kind of nicely, but it's, it's not even close. Like the, I had this thing loose before, so you can tell, but it's definitely not, not the right thing. So either the one I'm getting from eBay, because I, I ended up ordering two, because I didn't, kind of didn't trust it, but uh, it's definitely either not made right, or there's something wrong with the other bushing. Uh, kind of upset, but everything's in for the most part. But uh, this one end, I just got to tighten the silicone bars. Oh, always something. Silicone bars are nice. So I did the rear shocks and uh, the rear brake hose. Everything went fine. There's nothing wrong with the lines. They all cracked off without even heating them or, or spraying anything on them. I get the transmission in my hair. Very easy. Bolt, side bolt comes right out. These two bolts come right out. You can get the socket in, you know. And then look at the bolt. Right up against the exhaust. Can't fucking get it all the way out, motherfucker. Always something. I gather I can loosen this, but still, it's like such an. Why the extra step? Why? Why do we do this? Believe it or not, I got it out by hammering the fuck on the, out of the thing. Uh, as you can see, you can see light through the top there. So, although, I mean, actually, yeah, it was sagging for sure. You know, you could see it when it was in there. And it's old and hard. I did the motor mounts. They were definitely bad. But, like, sure hope, because it wasn't really made right, because it has these, uh, these square things here for this oval hole that was over here, and I don't see the same oval hole over here. So I had to make it, and it's like, it's still like the bracket is like a lot bigger than it needs to be. And uh, I'm hoping it's right. So, it's going to have to work. Um, well, we'll see. He says aftermarket from China is crappy. All you got to do is just, you know, chop a half an inch off the front. Elongate the holes by three times the amount because they had a hole over here. And we need the holes going all the way back there. It may not even be long enough. Um, but then again, you can see where these are. Yeah, the center line of the bolt was right here. And right, yeah, it looks like it was further back. I, I might need to grind these more. But yeah, a little bit of effort. That's all it takes. Something tells me, though, it can kind of... Yeah, because it, it had to be more on the inside there. I'm going to test fit it and see what happens. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll grind a little more. Fuck it. Alrighty. It's in. Bolt going the other way. Made it much easier. All that seems to be working. It's not hitting anything it should be hitting like it was before. And it's basically lined up where it wasn't even close. Because they only put regular holes in it. It didn't put the elongated holes. Makes me feel like it's mainly for a van, and it probably crosses to the same shit. But they don't realize that it has those elongated holes. But, you know, it's fine. It's not going anywhere. It's not higher or lower. Is that the main thing? Yeah, so I did these shocks, and they were aftermarket. They were the, the, the Goodwin rows that you can't even get for the cars anymore, you know? I'm pretty sure you can't, but uh, maybe some of these old ones you can. But uh, they were dead. Oh, that's in all the way, haha. <laughs> this guy here, that one was dead. This one is right in its will. That's as far out as it goes, where you saw it before. And it's possible you play with it and start to move a little, little more, but yeah, that's about it. Um, I've never seen these shots ever dead. That's a really good job. But these only one in the truck now. But, uh, <laughs> there's a door now. It would just go right right in. It's very possible that you lay it down and the gas kind of moves and it gets a little bit stiffer, but it's gone. All right. So, I did a lot of work on this car. Um, hello. Anyway, uh, did the all four shocks, all front end. The front brake lines, the rear brake lines are absolutely perfect, but the rear brake hose, I gotta get, uh, uh, what do you call it, I gotta 
to get brake leaders for the front. I had to beat out the, uh, the bleeders. And uh, I got the rest of the belts on here. It's looking, looking mighty good, I must say. I ordered the longer belt, uh, the 46 and a half, because the 47 wasn't going to work. Don't even know if the 46 is going to 46 and a half is going to work, but if this is the consolation that you have to loosen the pivot, it's, it is what it is. It's not going anywhere, you know. Now that I timed it all the way, it doesn't. There's no movement. It's, it's really not. This is a little smaller than I expected. Um, I think I asked him to measure it, and it's really not really right. But it's probably more than enough for that little unit. Um, it's something that could be missed at any time, but I think, uh, I think all is well right now. One other thing, uh, I just did a, a strategic bend right here, and a couple of places down the line here, and on the on the line, I should say, and it's fine. I think it was a feature wrench to tighten to hold that one to tighten the front, and uh, just wanted to, to add that. So, I got a new air filter for this, which I got to put in and put this guy back on. So far, so good. As you can see, I got that guy in. Oh no, it's standing on this damn grill. Alright. I think I had enough for tonight. That was a long project just to get that. I have an idea how I'm going to mount this. I think I have to get a special thing because I want to put the... Uh, the receiver dryer next to it and I would need a male to male or a female to female thread uh, hoo to make it kind of like mount permanently to this kind of like how the factory did it and I gotta enlarge in these holes here because you can't get any of these lines through so I don't know what the deal is with that I can't find any original holes you know unless it's meant to go like to down there you know, under and over. It's kind of silly. It doesn't make sense to me, but you know what? I could do it like that too. But usually they go through here. I don't have another car. I gotta try to look for pictures on the internet of how these things will run. Um, my guess is it goes all the way to the top back here, you know, and then behind. Um, can't really run it this way because of all the other shit that's here and the fact that the uh, wheel liner guy has to get into this, you know, and in general need that, that this panel here to be able to be removed, the square panel. Mm -hmm. So let's crank the torsion bars up. <laughs> Seems like it's four by four. <laughs> and the rear is up a lot more after doing the shocks. I'm sure it'll come down. They, they both look like like somebody uh, it's more so on the driver's side, but right here, that leaf spring looks like somebody put a jack there. So it's a little hard to see here, and I don't think it's nearly as bad over here. Actually, I guess when you look at it a certain angle, it is, but the other side seems to be more, more so. Oh. All right, that's it for tonight. All right, so all I got is this cushion here. I don't have, I, I bought, I didn't buy enough nuts, so I got to still mount this stuff. I had to take all this out. Um, it came out pretty good otherwise. I thought I was going to drill a hole here, but I ended up drilling this, this guy out and down there because um, I couldn't reach over here. I got this guy, and then I got an array of stuff, you know, down and then over. I hope that before you hope you caught that. Yeah, so basically, I don't know, I just go 90 degrees and then come to here. And then I bent these lines right here. This is the, where the factory lines go, I found out. That's what there's two holes for. They hold similar clips like that. This is close to where uh, this was being mounted. And I bent the line, the hard line going to the high side. And of course, the low side. And it's twisting up here, attached to the, the uh, this arm. And it kind of naturally kind of goes up which is good, it's away from the heat of the engine. This is the cold hose. I'm gonna probably put a, I'm gonna go to Home Depot and get a one inch uh, one. Cause I did, I did one here, it's not even necessary because it gets hot, it's more to protect it, you know? Um, cause it gets really hot anyway. Now this line here, 
I actually had this line. I bought it. It's from a Peterbilt truck, and it fit perfectly. So I'm like, why am I going to mess around making another line? So I only had to make the one line. I fucked up the first time. I ruined one end that's over there because it had the wrong hose on it. I, I couldn't find the hose, and then it ended up being it was with, like there was two sizes of hoses together in the box, and I grabbed the top one thinking that's what it was, and I was wrong. But this all got bent nicely. I don't see a real need to put any more supports like this. I mean, it's going to be rigid once I get all this in here. And even if it's not, I can put an extra, you know, huya probably to some degree. I probably have to tweak it a little bit. But, I mean, for the most part, it came out nice. I just, we're going to have to do something about this. Because, uh, you know what it is, this was, ended up being a lot smaller than I thought. That... He ordered and uh i don't know why that came to be i think i had him measure it and then i found it based on his measurement but um it's it's really i mean this is big enough really because it's a small little under dash unit and uh it's more of you know you can't find these radiators and i think the replacement ones aren't this small they're bigger they go to 22 inches so that's going to have an impact on it it's you know and they're not even available I was looking at how much is a new one and they're really expensive and not available uh or not available um so i'm maybe put more of this stuff in kind of stuff in here i knew i would need something pretty wide i don't know if you should put a piece of like vinyl or something like that because really the top and the bottom is not this this foam is not really doing much it was more to protect it because it was going to be up close to here. And I won't. But still, I could have got a taller one. It's not a big deal. But uh, maybe I'll get a piece of vinyl going across here instead. You know, because... Something's got to happen with this because it's not like exactly how I anticipated, of course, because I expected it to take up more room. See, like with mine, I literally have mine plastered up against the radiator, but I custom made the, um, I custom made the radiator and the radiator is like up against it. Like there's no room for leakage. Plus I'm putting an electric fan on the front here. That's the other thing. It's like technically, we'll see how cold it gets, but this, this needs a, and this needs a uh, fan shroud in order for it to really pull the air. You know, along with leaks and everything, it, it could be a moot point sealing it all up because if it doesn't have a fan shroud, it may not be able to do what it needs to do. And you can't find fan shrouds anymore, and they're really only for the AC cars, which have the bigger radiator. So that's another thing. So they have these universal things that might work, you know. They're more geared towards V8s because V8s are the ones that get, get, get hot, but it's more so of getting the air across. So the worst-case scenario, a fan could be added if, you know, but uh, it puts an extra thing on it on the electrical system and stuff. But it's definitely going to be cold on the highway. But uh, this, is, this has been a lot of fun, actually. I can't believe how well it came out. I went to Home Depot. I got this little bracket here to hold on the receiver dryer. All the bends came out right. I put a little thing right there where the module was. Like some things, like really, like came out really good it just uh, right there i'm going to probably put a piece of rubber where the two lines are hitting because i did the brake lines first and um there was just too many bends to figure that out uh, and i'm probably going to put another one of those clamps on that inner fender well if i can uh get a zippy screw in there and uh whether i'll prop it up a little bit maybe you know i'll see like probably right where that bend is but on this side of it you know the screw there because it's a little it, it was it was a hard angle to get um but it, 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 it looks it looks nice you know it looks looks fairly fairly good here you know so i'm quite happy and i just got to get these extra nuts you know because basically what i did here is i took out the radiator screws and I had these, they, at Home Depot had these black screws, and I ended up turning them into studs because they had full length uh, uh, threads. So I put this way, I put a nut tight on this end, 
so that you can remove this and it won't come out. And I have washers and, and uh, some fender washers and well, I gotta buy more fender washers and nuts and uh, maybe rock washers. Um, I got regular nuts, which could work, but I, I I miscounted what I was doing in my fucking head. Yeah, I got what's it, uh, four, like two extra bolts. I got two. Got plenty of regular washers. I really didn't use them in the end. I wanted the fender washers. I don't know what happened to the other lock washers. Damn it. Dumped it all out. Uh, had it in this bag. Might be hiding in here. I don't think so. Were these four on the other side? Oh, I might have lined them up and then it fell. I was putting them on, so, and then I was, I was looking around, I'm like, wait a minute, I got no nuts. Not those ones. Anyway. Uh, see that, I chose myself. I didn't count right or something. Yeah, just dump everything out, Mike. All right. So, that's what I got to buy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I used none of these washers. Cool, they had black ones, so I just thought it was kind of cool. I mean, even though I'm not really black, but kind of hides it a little bit. Um, yeah, so this has definitely been a process, and, uh, you know, uh, now I got to do the inside uh, little lines. So I started the car up because I haven't started it. I had the gas line off and everything, and I went to go. I'm starting to look at the bracket that holds this thing and whatnot. And then I go back to the engine. It was running absolutely true, and now it's fucking wobbling. I'm pretty upset. It doesn't look bad on camera, but it's wobbling. So I loosened it. You know, like I said, it's, it's funny how it moves around, but it's something not right with this geometry i gotta leave it looser apparently i never got the other belt yet i'm still waiting for it but um this is a huge bummer it, it, it took all of 10 minutes to do that it didn't seem like it was that tight it really didn't straighten itself out, but now I don't know. I can't believe that. I guess the bearing is replaceable. They must put a cheap bearing, because i, I never seen that before in my life. I don't care how tight you got something, you're not going to kill the bearing in one, in, in one five-minute run. I literally just warmed it up. I just got a little heat in the car. I was going to warm it up a little Oh, it's pretty bad. Okay, this is the unit installed. It just so happens that this guy that we have hooked up, uh, maybe with a double-sided stick tape, maybe I can use this existing screw right here for this one at least. And this guy still opens up and doesn't hit it. That's pretty cool. Um, like I said, you can see the brackets. It's screwed into metal. I had to put like a, a nut on the nut. This one had direct... Um, uh, metal right there so it doesn't chop up the uh, dashboard there's two little holes on each side and it's it's very secure and i took the bracket and i cut it this bracket was supposed to go up and over but there was no way to get it in there and you would never be able to fit the whole thing in afterwards i was trying to put it upside down screw it to the floor that wasn't happening either because it there's more room from there's less room up top here than it is in the bottom, so it wouldn't stretch, and I would have had to modify it. This way, by cutting it, cutting a section off at the end there, and putting this this side, which curved in, put it on that side, and put this side on this side, it worked out well. So I still got to figure out these lines, which are a short run from here to here, okay? And I need the swivel. Like right now, this, this screw here is not tightened all the way, so I actually was able to pull it in and out a little bit. Um, I might have to. I have it out a little bit right here because 
I need a swivel, a number 10 swivel, and it's close to the uh, heater box there. I don't know if this shows any, hard to tell, hard to tell. I'm trying to look with them. I'm on the seats. Um, but I'm actually happy with the way this turned out other than the last problem. Uh, I think things are working out well. Um, you know, you're gonna see it, but it's not, you know, it's not terribly gaudy, you know? But if you want AC, it's something about the Dodge Diplomat and this, you know, the the Volari. If you look at it, there's not much of a dashboard. It it's, gives you more room on the inside. I think that's what they were trying to do, you know. But obviously, you know, in hindsight, you can say you can get a whole other dashboard or something like that from something else. It's it's a little hard to do, you know. Uh, I tried to look for one. They wanted over $500, and they weren't willing to ship it then, you know. So... You know, technically, if something better comes out, you could probably do something. Um, you know, the the bigger vintage air stuff, you know, but you have to remove the whole heater box and put a whole aftermarket setup in there. But for right now, this is fine as far as I'm concerned. And uh, that's it for now because I got to order the swivel connections. I don't have them. If I have them, I have them in another car that's nowhere near here. And... Uh, I just can't find them anymore, so got to order more stuff. Got to research it and then order. Okay, although this is a bit of a project to get this piece off here, um, it seems like if it's going to work, it's going to work. So uh, ultimately, I put this in the press upside down. I have something that switched on this one. I put 5,000 pounds of pressure here and 5,000 pounds of pressure in the center. And we shall see, because ultimately, no matter which way this thing goes, like I'm just kind of resting it on there. I got it in my, my I'm pulling a little more steady. And of course, I got to clear. It seems pretty straight to me. Ultimately, when you get it back together, and the, the clutch disc is on top here, that's where you're going to really know, because you'll see the air gap is affected or something like that, because that's how I was able to tell to begin with, you know, because the front was going perfectly, you know, this was flush, and this was not, so we shall see when I put it back together. All right, so unfortunately, I looked at that video, and it really didn't uh, look like it was straight, but now... Like this pulley is maybe just a little bit messed up, but that's the center of the pulley is going fine. The whole thing is not wobbling. And um, so what I did is I heated this fucking bitch up. I took the bearing out. I heated it up. I pressed the bearing back in. I, I kept doing it on the flat side um, on the center, but it almost felt like the center part was coming out more than the outer part. So then I... I have a transmission drum and I put it on the outside and I put that in a press and I really, with it heated 7,000 pounds of pressure and it seems like now that it's a world of difference. All right, now I got to press this in and uh, hopefully I'm going to hit it in because that's, that's what I was hoping to do. I had this guy here. And there's one of these guys. Maybe we'll find a bigger one and uh, knock it in and uh, take it from there. Okay. Both clips are in. That looks fucking straight, so I'm going to put this clutch cover on and see what happens. Yeah, baby. I mean, if it's off, it's off a minuscule amount. This is nothing. And the only thing that got a little bit fucked up was this pulley here. For putting it in the press. But the belt is only traveling here. So it'll be fine. Other than losing a bunch of refrigerant oil, because now that everything is open, I should have kept those plugs. But um learned my lesson now. Haha. <laughs>
get on the alternator or the power steering pump on. But I was, I had to move the power steering pump while it was loose because it's the last belt you tighten, it's the front one. So I had to tighten this one. I had to uh, basically tighten it to bring it away so this can drop down a hair more. And then I was just able to get on the 65 belt. Now, for all intents and purposes, it might be fine, but it's it's a little rubbery right there and not so much there, and it's all the way tight. That being said, I can probably tighten it a little bit more if I uh, get rid of that nut, that gold nut that's, that's there that I was bottoming out on. So that might work, but after looking at photos of the original setup, if you had a 77, I guess some of the 78 ones, they had the conventional Chrysler um, uh, 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 air compressor. And I didn't know this. And then it has a big pulley right here that pushes down on the belt. And originally in another video, I was saying that ah, that's not really intended for these V-belts, but Chrysler did it. So I might just, I could probably make another threaded thing that pushes down. You put a looser belt on and you wing it down there. And uh, all will be all will be good in uh, in Valari land um, because you know this is only going to get looser because it's not it, it's like just barely tight enough. But hang on, let me just shut it off now, and I will show you. So I might have done that from the start and not done anything hokey dokey like this. Not that it's hokey dokey, but. Like I said, if I remove that nut, I might be able to get a little tighter, but then I'm risk of touching over here, which means I'd have to clear more metal off of here. But right now, it's like just tight enough, you know, but it's it, it's more concern over here. But it's it's tight, but it's it's not really all the way tight. And I don't know how much because that nut is actually that nut is actually getting relieved out the hole there now that I see it. So, I mean, it would have to be a matter of, um, I guess that hole is big enough to hold a nut. Yes, yeah, it's kind of going through. I mean, unless it's just snagging right there, you know, seems like it could be. So, I, I believe it's bottomed out. That's not going any further. So, um... Yeah, but I was kind of pissed off at myself. It looked like a serpentine belt, a wide-ass belt pulley that they had right about here, pushing it down. And I'm like, I went through all this, and I I, I bet you I could have... That was the... Because, like, it was funny. I was looking at different junkyards, and nobody could find the one. I said it has to have the, the Nipidenzo Sanko, Sanyo or Sanko or fucking whatever this is called kind of compressor. And they have a neat setup for it. And uh, But it's very hard to find. Um, but now looking the, they did, those Volaris did have the old Chrysler style. They didn't come out with that till probably 79 or 80. So, um, that's a bummer, but yeah, the 60 belt would have worked better, but now I could put the, the 70 belt, which I returned. Um, but even maybe possibly have to put a longer belt and that way it'll fit on easy. And I basically just make this more permanent. And the only thing you tighten is the is the uh, is the pulley for adjustment. So that's probably where I'm going to look. It's Sunday. It's late, and uh, I'm tired and aggravated. I got to go to work tomorrow for the first time in six months, and um, these are only hand tight. I got to add more oil to that. But I mean, it's a success for the for the for the pulley sake. Um, took all day, but um, definitely the end result was like, oh, I could have done something different. But um, I don't have to make, I could still leave like a double adjustment. So, so I, could, I kind of pull it in with that and, and have a, a thing over here and you do the combination of the two. Um, you know, whatever kind of makes it easier and to give it, make, to make sure that it's fully tightened. Because just because you tighten down here, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be 100% correct over here. So, you know, then again, it probably doesn't matter too much, but it's, it's better to concentrate the tightness here. So even if we use this belt and just barely go down on it like that, that's all we need to do. 
But now I've got to try to find a, a serpentine pulley, which shouldn't be an issue, but I'd like to find the hooyah behind it that, that can um, thread into it directly. Uh, that would be ultimately what I want to find. Um, and that way I can do something like this guy here where I drilled it out, weld it to this, and I just zip it down, and then it, it goes down. And the serpentine one is wide, and that's what it looks like. It looks just like a serpentine belt smooth pulley. And all I need to do is push down just a little bit, and there should be plenty of room here. It's one inch wide, so that's about one inch. So between spacing it off of this or off of this uh, particular spot, it should go right on. And then, you know, whatever I put, I should be able to weld to that same bracket. So I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm happy, but uh, yeah, it could have gone a different way. But this is, I don't really plan anything. I just kind of do it by my will and common sense, you know, but um, I really didn't know that the factory actually put a pulley over here, you know. So now that I know, I'm a little depressed, but uh, lines came out nice, you know, all that stuff. So uh, it, it's still a work in progress. I still have to find the stuff inside. As somebody who sells something on eBay, they're, they're a little expensive. And the numbers that they give are not cross-referencing to Rock Auto because usually you can find that stuff for like five or ten dollars, maybe fifteen. But the guy's asking twenty-five dollars per thing, per per adapter, and I gotta have you know, quick, you know, and the 90, these ninety-degree things, you know, uh, making the difference uh, as far as the angles I need to make the little short hose that goes from the condenser to the uh, um, to that junction block right there. Alrighty, next up, next up coming up as soon as I can.